As the 2010s ended, roundups of the best movies of the decade started surfacing online. Most of them highlighted the usuals, Get Out, Fury Road, Inception, Parasite, but for the life of me, I could not find a single list that included my pick for the best movie of the 2010s, Jeff Nichols' 2013 masterpiece, Mud. So if the journalists and film critics who compile these lists fail to acknowledge Mud, that's fine, because I'm happy to in this video. An exercise in authenticity, this movie about two southern teens who find a fugitive on an island encompasses so much more that I could fit into a grammatically correct and audibly appealing sentence. The scope of mud is not one to be easily simplified, which I find frustrating when recommending it to friends who ask me what the movie is about, but I also see it as a credit to the production. Mud balances familiar ideas and relatable themes like love and our relationships with others alongside characters and settings unfamiliar to mainstream moviegoers. This hard-won balance has resulted in a film that has aged phenomenally, a movie I revisited constantly because its themes and characters transcend time, age, and geography. The purity of mud can largely be attributed to the screenplay, written by Arkansas native Jeff Nichols. Scenes depict the real dirty work of making a living off a river by clam digging or selling fish, interwoven with compelling narrative plot points, involving action, mystery, romance, and crime. We've seen a lot of movies a little bit like mud, but we've never seen one movie just like Mud. To me, that's why it's so noteworthy. It quietly demands and earns your respect and attention, and it's due in large part to the writing. In interviews with the cast and crew, nearly everyone said they were on board with taking part in the film as soon as they read the screenplay. They sent me the script and I read it, and I told them I was interested. Of course, the script was amazing. I could really capture the scenes by just reading. It wasn't, you know, it was no brainer. Like two seconds later, I was in. I remember after reading the script because it hit me emotionally and I thought, my God, I haven't seen anything like this in a long time. It's one of the best scripts I've ever read. It didn't need rewrites. It didn't need me to embellish things. The writing's really good. The identity of Mud is really, really strong. Even Pulitzer Prize winning writer Sam Shepard had glowing praise for the script, encouraging his eventual director to leave the work completely intact. When I saw the script, I thought it was just Amazing. One of the best scripts I've read in a long, long time. You know? One of the most exciting moments on this film for me was um, getting a call from his agent. She kind of said, uh, this never happens. He said I would be honored to play Tom Blankenship and tell the writer don't change a word. Like any great screenplay does, this one evokes themes that are universal. Some of the ones that come to mind are coming of age, heartbreak, mentorship, discovery and adventure in a place you least expect to find them, and masculinity, an idea considered from an intergenerational perspective, be it the stern, traditional ideal embodied by Tom Blankenship, unattached yet present, evidenced by Galen. I know I'm just your uncle, not a parent, but uh, you can tell me things if you need to. Survival, physical strength, and fearlessness possessed by mud, the need to be in control, and the embarrassment that comes alongside failing to do so as seen through Senior. You are a man who's never had the strength to support his own life. Or the process of defining the term for yourself, like Neckbone and Ellis do, figuring out where to land between getting into fistfights and standing up for what you think is right. This houseboat's in your mother's name. She wants to leave it. River Authority's got every right to come in here and tear this place apart board by board. That ain't right. You work out of here. This screenplay, the motifs explored in it, and a production that respects its source material all deliver on the film's promise of sincerity, alongside an incredibly strong sense of place. They even went so far as to include a cafeteria menu from the middle school in a town where they actually filmed the movie. All of this makes viewers feel like they're right there in Southeast Arkansas even though the vast majority of them have never seen such a place. That's no accident. David Wingo's musical score completely captures the essence of the movie. Often it encourages adventure in this forgotten corner of America and beckons for you to join these two kids on their journey. But it's also used to capture the mood in the film's more somber moments, like when Neckbone and Ellis find Juniper at the bar. On top of that, to stay true to what the story demanded, 
Jeff Nichols insisted on filming on location in Arkansas rather than take advantage of the ease and financial benefit of filming elsewhere. Arkansas is amazing, you know, and we fought really hard to get this film in Arkansas. It would have been easier um, in a lot of ways to take this film to Louisiana or someplace with a huge tax incentive and established crew base and everything else, but I grew up in Little Rock. When I was writing this film, I wrote it for this exact place. It was really, really important for me to shoot this here. This environment seems foreign, but authentic and real, creating a tangible sense of place that makes mud setting an essential and unique part of the film. Nichols and cinematographer Adam Stone perfectly capture the stunning beauty west of the Mississippi, effectively transporting the audience to the Arkansas Delta. They also bring out low angles, capturing the aspirational and youthful point of view of our main character, Ellis. And make no mistake, despite the film's name, Ellis is our protagonist. He's in almost every scene of the movie, save for those momentary check-ins with King, two quick scenes with Galen on the river, Mud and Neck sending the boat off, Mud and Juniper's goodbye, and that beautiful ending scene with Mud and Tom at the mouth of the Mississippi. That's a lot of pressure on a 14-year-old actor, but Ty Sheridan delivers. He hands in one of the greatest performances by a child actor in a movie in recent history. Every single thing you told me was a lie! You never cared about her, and you never cared about us! And it's because of this performance and this perspective that the movie's view on love seems so innocent and simultaneously heartbreaking. At the end of the day, that idea, that exploration of love and relationships in all of its different ways is the core of mud, be it parental love, a waning marriage, young love, the love of your friends or your family, lost love, or rejected love, all captured through Ellis's point of view. I love you. <laughs> You're 14. And after all of these ups and downs, the movie sends Ellis off with its most hopeful and wonderful scene. Given every excuse to throw his aspirations away, the movie lets us know that Ellis is going to be okay. With a simple wave from the girl next door, we're reminded it's never too late to give up the hope to find love again. But I think the best scene to point to showing that Mud understands the idea of love more than most other films is when Mud and Juniper say goodbye to one another. Almost everything that happens in this movie is a direct result of that love, that history, and the experiences that these two have shared. Yet the audience sees them in just one brief moment together. There are no words spoken between Mud and Juniper in this scene, or for that matter, the entire movie. But in these few seconds of shared screen time, and a wave to each other from across Highway 65, we understand all we need to know about the love that these two have shared. This scene proves Nichols understands how subtlety can be employed in filmmaking as an asset rather than a detractor. And as a result, he created a film that's grounded by a flawless screenplay and heightened by terrific performances and a level of visual authenticity that shows immense dedication to the craft of filmmaking. Mud rewards its audience with one of the most genuine, moving, relatable film experiences this century. So when we look back on this movie decades from now, that's how I hope Mud will be remembered. Thanks for watching everyone. If you're a fan of Mud like I am, let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.